Okay, on this example, we are given a height function. We're told a ball's thrown into the air. We're given this height function denoted by y equals 22t minus 27t squared. As we're looking at this, um, y, our output values, are going to be heights, and our input values are going to be how many seconds t um, have gone by since we tossed it into the air. So our goal on this is to find the average velocity for this time period beginning at t equals 1, and then first lasting only one-tenth of a second, then one-hundredth of a second, then one-thousandth of a second. So the first thing we want to do on this is we really care about when t equals 1. So I'm going to use our function, and I'm going to replace each of our t's with 1. And this is going to be used in each one of these individual calculations. This is going to be 22 minus 27, which works out to be negative 5. All right, so I'm going to treat these as ordered pairs as we go along. The first one, we have 1 is our input, negative 5 is our output value. That's going to come back up in each one of these computations of average velocity. The next one we want to do is um, figure out if the flight only lasted one-tenth of a second. It started at one second. It lasted for one-tenth of a second. So we can next look at when a t value is 1 plus 0.1 is 1.1 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and get our y value that goes with that, or the height. So that's going to be, again, back to that original function, 22 times 1.1 minus 27 times 1.1 quantity squared. I'm getting my calculator out to help me on this one, and I got negative 8.47. I would say don't do any rounding until the very, very end if we're going to round at all. So this corresponds with the ordered pair. We input a 1.1, we output a negative 8.47. We can do the same thing with each one of these additional values, and we are at some point <laughs> along the way. But the next thing we'd like to do is actually calculate the average velocity. So the average velocity, or average rate of change, you can think of that as meaning the same thing as the slope formula, like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use x1, y1 is going to correspond with that point 1, negative 5. In this one, x2, y2 is going to correspond with that point, the 1.1, negative 8.47. Filling into our slope formula, we're going to get, let me think, negative 8.47 minus a negative 5 all over 1.1 minus 1. The subtracting a negative works out to addition, so this is negative 3.47 divided by 0.1, which is negative 34.7. Get this out of the way. We'll do that estimation in a little bit. All right, the rest of these, it's kind of rinse and repeat that we're going to repeat the same things. The next one, we're going to use a t value of 1 plus 0 0.01, so 1.01. We'll get a y value by plugging into that original formula. And this usually doesn't take too long, but it is a little bit frustrating that it's kind of busy work at the beginning here. All right, negative 5.3227. So again, that's an ordered pair. What we have is we replaced the t with 0 0.01, and our output was negative 5.3227. So as an ordered pair, I'm going to treat this this time as our x2, y2, going back to the same x1, y1 for each one of these. This time our slope, our average rate of change, is going to be negative 5.3227 minus negative 5, so that'll work out to be adding 5 over 1.01 minus 1. A little bit of simplifying down, we have negative 0 0.3227 over 0 0.01, which is negative 32.27. All right, one more of these, and then we'll estimate what we think the instantaneous velocity is. All right, last one here on computations. We're going to plug in t equals 1 plus 0 0.001. So y equals 22 times 1.001 minus 27 times 1.001 squared. Get out the calculator. Negative 5.032027. Again, treat it like an ordered pair. 
you don't have to write this as an ordered pair to fill into the average velocity or average rate of change formula. Just don't want to lose you along the way. This time this is our x2, y2 and the velocity is going to be the average rate of change I should say is negative 5.032027 minus negative 5 over 1.001 minus 1 which eventually works out to be negative 32.027 didn't show my work on the top but we're left with that decimal a negative version of that decimal divided by 0 0.001 all right so the idea on this is we're cutting down the time right we went from initially a tenth of a second after the time we really care about one second into this journey of this ball then we went to one hundredth of a second later one thousandth of a second later and calculated each one of these average velocities so the idea on these is you're going to get an instantaneous velocity or the speed it's actually traveling at one second into the journey if you get values closer and closer together to that one all right so we went from 34 negative 34.7 to negative 32.27 to negative 32.027 so it feels to me like we're creeping closer and closer to what the instantaneous velocity would be I mean 0 0.001 seconds is almost right at one second right it's only 0 0.001 seconds later than the one we really care about at t equals one so I would estimate this one is going to be right about negative 32 and I guess our units, if we're going to be careful about this, we're going to be in feet per second. All right, so the closer and closer approximation you get to the one you really care about, in our case, t equals 1, the better and better approximation you're going to get. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working through these. I know it's a lot of busy work.